All right, so the last video I put out was a series of random notes, right? Right? Paired with other notes. So, why would we want to play those things? Don't we want to play with other musicians and sound like we're playing music? Well, of course you do. Why can't we just rely on the jazz language? Well, because the jazz language is fine. It's great. It's a nice um, foundational structure to build on top of and basically that's what I'm doing with it when I when I suggest these concepts all right look the jazz language is great as spoken by Charlie Parker and all the greats but if you only stick with that and you stay with tradition and that's your language verbatim there's nothing new in it and that's kind of defeating the purpose of jazz and the language evolving so I would say add your own twist to the jazz language I think it's fine and that's kind of what I'm trying to do with this. So anyway, whenever you take these randomized notes, you're basically doing a couple things. Musically challenging yourself to find random notes and be able to play them, access them, make a musical in the moment, uh, and technically accessing them, you know. You're saying, look, I can find one note after another and make it lyrical, musical, make sense, even if it doesn't make sense tonally. When you pair it with other notes, that gives each one of those random notes maybe a little bit more validity. So, uh, because it has a neighbor, right? And then so forth with, uh, with increasing um, groupings. What I'm going to show you now is how to kind of use it in context. All right, so typically, let's go all the way back, shall we? C minor pentatonic. And the first time we ever use a note outside of it is usually the blue note. Right? Uh, then somewhere along the line we learn some Zeppelin and realize, ooh, we can fill in some more gaps. All right? Then as we graduate through our playing, we either stick with sort of the rock language, the blues language, and that's all great. It's a good anchor. Uh, we evolve to the jazz language. That's all great. It's a good anchor. But then if you're seeking more, right? You have to stick with the chord tones. They're still there if you're going to play over any kind of tonal music. I'm not suggesting you go out and play this on, you know, a Motown tune when you get a solo on the gig. Uh, but this stuff can work in some contexts, right? So if you're trying to stretch a little bit on a gig and you're allowed that space and you're playing over C minor, whatever, you can be playing over giant steps. You can do this over giant steps, right? To get to that level. I'm not going to teach giant steps like this today. But... Take chord tones, and obviously anybody who studied the jazz language knows about encircling chord tones, you know. Right? But what I'm suggesting is still have that. Then you introduce some of this other stuff. The other stuff being a little bit more randomization. So, and you're doing it, but you're still anchoring it to chord tones so you don't sound like you're crazy and playing completely off in your own world, right? So, That's what I'm talking about. 